is the Analog Solutions Megacity. And this demonstration is a special demonstration because it's the first time I have ever done a demonstrative situation, a descriptive demonstration where uh, the instrument is not a synthesizer. So this is a, a first. But I have done two demonstrations of the Analog Solutions Megacity Analog 64-step sequencer. And people are asking, they're like, okay, that thing is super cool. How does it work? Now, typically, I am the wrong guy to come to in regard to sequencing because I know there is a, a, a giant uh, culture and community has grown up uh, recently into sequencing and there's a whole bunch of standard practices and expectations and even terminology that I do not know. However, uh, in this particular instance, I have become conversant with this sequencer's unique aspects, the stuff that uh, describing it isn't going to tell you the whole story, uh, which is often the case with other sequencers. You can just list the functions and you know what it's going to do. You know what it's going to do better than in many cases I do. But in this case, uh, this is a different bird. This is a different animal. And it, uh, it has its own unique functional aspects that I have come to understand. So I'm going to stop telling you why I'm going to explain it to you and explain it to you. Okay, this is the Analog Solutions Megacity. It is a 64-step analog, completely analog sequencer. It's also a two-track 32-step sequencer. It has unique functionality that makes it a really fun but also creative tool. It is not locked into the standard sequencer pattern of uh, a lot of sequencers. And I'm going to talk about that right now. Okay. Looking at it, uh, the functionality is you have these knobs like this one that is lit up and they set the voltage by turning them. So they're, also, they're both lights and knobs, which is pretty cool. Uh, you have the ability to direct that to one of two gates and you have a functionality called jump, which I will explain later. With this uh, sequencer, you can choose your clock source. It can be an external clock source that you would plug in right here. Uh, like if you're me, uh, a voltage clock source, or uh, you can also use MIDI as a clock source as well. Uh, you have the ability to, it has its own internal clock, which you can use, which we're going to be using throughout this demonstration. Underneath the clock source, you'll see there's a jack, and uh, when it's set to external, that jack is the clock in jack. When it's set to stop, it's stopped, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, and what, if it's set to st uh, setting three, which is MIDI note zero, zero, or internal, then it's a clock out that you can direct to other sequencers. You can also move your way through the sequence using the step button. So, uh, of course, you have a tempo knob here that you'll see once we get going. The tempo knob allows you to set the internal tempo, and you can control that with a clock CV input here. And now we're going to get further into other functionality. Okay, um, first, let's look at this as a 64-step analog sequencer. I'm going to play it right now because I know some of you are going, dude, there's too much talking. And uh, there was no talking in my previous two demonstrations of this instrument. So you're going to have to put up with a lot of talking here. I'm sorry. I'll try and make it entertaining. Um, I'll use character voices. I'm not going to use character voices. Okay. Our first setting for mode. Mode is where a lot of the creativity comes from in this sequencer. So we're gonna describe all of the different settings. The first setting is serial, which is basically your 64 step sequencer to begin with. Without any other settings, that's what it is. Okay, so let's hear a 64 step sequence from the Mega City. I'm just gonna turn it to internal clock and it will begin playing.
Okay, you may have noticed that half of that sequence was a kind of bassy sound and half of that sequence was a sort of melodic sound. Um, there's a reason why I have done that that we'll get to. Of course, you don't need to do it that way. Uh, you could have the entirety of the sequence be playing in that bassy sound or the entirety of the sequence be played in that melodic sound. It's just a matter of how it's set up. I'm going to tell you how I have it set up so that I can demonstrate some really cool things that are going to happen. What I've done is there are two channels. We have the left channel and the right channel, and we'll get to that when we talk about splitting it into two 32-step sequences. But there are two possible outputs. Right now, I have the CV out from the left side going into a Nyborg 12, an Analog Solutions Nyborg 12 set to a bass sound. And I have the CV out coming from the right side going into a different Nyborg 12 that has uh, a melodic sort of sound. Now, in order to trigger these two synthesizers separately, I am using the Megacities gate out possibilities in this way. You basically have two gate channels, uh, X and Y. I have the X channel going to the first Nyborg so that whenever the bass sound is happening, the gate is triggering that bass sound. And I have the Y output from the right side gate going to the other Nyborg so that whenever the melodic side of things is playing, uh, it's triggering the appropriate Nyborg. Now, if I wanted to play the entirety of this sequence on one synthesizer, I could very easily add both of these CV outputs, the left and the right, together into one jack by using a switch here that says add RCV to LCV. And then that would mean that both sides, left and right, were coming out, the voltages were coming out of this one output. And that way I could play the whole thing from one synthesizer using voltage. That is not what I'm doing because of reasons you'll see when we get into splitting. And I suppose we can get into that right now. Um, uh, you'll notice uh, what, before I move on, the two channels, you have the opportunity for a glide in both channels, which is uh, smoothing the abrupt, abrupt changes between the individual voltage in each step. So that's good. And of course, range, the range of the voltage range of those steps, you can also adjust. And uh, yes. So, okay, let's talk about the second type of the first mode setting, which is fill. Now what fill does is it assigns the left channel as a repeating 32 step sequence. And it assigns the right channel as an alternate sequence that you can go to when you choose to. So a great paradigm to think of this in is like the left uh, voltages are your verse. And then when you want to, you can trigger the right voltages for your chorus. And so let's turn that on right now. And the way you turn that on is you have it, of course, in this first mode setting called serial fill. Now to get fill to happen, instead of it going entirely through all 64 steps and just to isolate to 32 steps, you hit this switch right up here. Okay, now it's in fill mode. Let me demonstrate what will happen. Okay, now we only have the left channel cycling through and repeating itself over and over again. Now, if we want to bring in the right channel as our fill or our chorus, uh, all we have to do is press the fill button at some point during uh, one iteration of the 32 step left side sequence. So now I have pressed fill. When it gets to this last step, it'll go to f column five in the right. Like that. Now it will return to the left side and it will re repeat the left side over and over again until I hit the fill button. Now you can also trigger fill externally with uh, this jack. 
So if you have some other device that you would like to make a decision about when that fill takes place, you can do that or uh, something along those lines. But uh, yeah, if you're me, you can just press the button. And so that's great. Right there, you have the possibility of having two different sequences that you get to decide when each of them happens. Uh, so uh, we've gone from 64 steps, 64 static steps, to the ability to divide it into a sort of 32-step uh, sequence and an alternate 32-step sequence that you can trigger. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about split. Now, in split mode, we have, again, two 32-step sequences, but they are not linear they are simultaneous. So when you put it in this mode, you have the left 32 steps and the right 32 steps happening simultaneously in the sequence. And that is really cool because then you have like two different, it's duophonic. You have two different melody lines or two different bass lines or two different, two different sequences happening simultaneously. Let's have a listen. So now you understand why I had it set up so that the left side and the right side uh, were two pretty starkly contrasting sequences back when we had it set to 64 steps. And that's the reason so that when we got to the split mode, they would act in Congress to be a bass line and a melody. So now you have basically a two track 32 step sequencer. And that allows you to do what I just did and have like these two things. Whereas before we were using that as 64 steps or two 32 step alternating sequences. Now we have two 32 steps acting in tandem. While we're talking about mode, uh, we also have the next setting, which is called one to two split. And it's the same situation where we have split left and right and they're happening simultaneously, but right goes half the speed of left. So let's set it to that and hear how it sounds. You'll notice that the left and right side are no longer synced. I mean, they can't be because the right side is going half the speed of the left side. So these two sides can act independently and that will become important uh, when we talk about some other features. 